Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Warships. This time we're going to be looking at the Cleveland, which is the Tier 6 American Cruiser. This ship is very exciting for a lot of people to get because it finally gives up the torpedoes that are used on the Phoenix and the Omaha and gets lots of guns, all the guns. It has 12 152mm cannons, which are the same caliber that you use on the Omaha. However, the Omaha had eight and now you have 12. It should be noted that these 12 guns are spread amongst four turrets. We can see one, two here at the front of the ship and two here at the back. Now these turrets have got a great traverse, which means that you can engage with your full plethora of 12 guns at very good angles around the ship. Now, while you're not able to turn them the whole way round and be able to drive straight at the enemy, you might be able to drive at an angle such as this and keep firing at them. And while the caliber of your guns, which are 152 millimeters, are underwhelming compared to the Japanese tier six cruiser, the Aoba, which has 203 millimeter main batteries. The Oba only gets six, whereas you get 12, so you've got twice as many guns firing at the same time. Your armor is also much thicker than the Aoba's, and your survivability is decent as you have more hit points. And the Cleveland does get a very healthy 35 thousand hit points when it is fully equipped. I think the Cleveland is a fantastic vessel and it's where you can really start to see the focus on that tremendous firepower and a good balance of mobility and armor to go with it. If it can avoid the torpedoes of the enemy ships, this thing rips apart destroyers in record time and it can provide a good supporting fire against many classes of battleships as long as it's not trading one versus one because eventually it's just going to have too much health too much health recovery and two big guns and unless he's a very very bad shot and you manage to evade a lot of his fire he is going to take you down the cleveland also marks the last of the american cruisers that do use these 152 millimeter main batteries from here on in i think as soon as you get to the pensacola the tier 7 ship it's going to take a huge step up to 203 millimeters and this further compounds the Cleveland into really trying to engage the, the medium to soft targets as soon as it tries to fight the heavier ships. The guns just don't seem to pack the same weight that a lot of the 203mm can. So that's quite enough of that. Let's see how the Cleveland performs in some gameplay. So here we go. I am playing in the Cleveland along with Jingles. Wow, what a matchup this is. We've got two, sorry, make that three tier six ships on our team. The enemy have got two. So I guess that's why they've got two extra ships, right? But that means more kills for us, hey? <laughs> so this was the first game I had played in the Cleveland in a good while. I hadn't played World of Warships in, I think, uh, a week or so. So the, my aim at the start of this game is very off indeed. Now, one of the best things about the Cleveland is its range. As we can see there, it can fire up to, I think, 14 and a half kilometers. That means that you have a lot of range to be able to engage your opponents. Or sometimes they can engage you. I know that this Omaha, I think, has got a, a 12 kilometer range. So he's right on the cusp of where he's going to be able to hit me or not. So our first salvo, he turned. When you're engaging at these 12 kilometer ranges, you do have to give a lot of lead as we're seeing here. And I'm trying to find out where my mark is. Let's see if we found it with our third salvo. It's looking good. I am bouncing into... Well, no, I was just avoiding bouncing into that ship. We hit our first shell. Are we going to get lucky? He seems to be speeding up. We barely scraped the back of his ship, but we do take out his rudder, I believe, there. So that means he can no longer turn his rudder anymore. So he has to come towards us. We hit him with four shells there out of the 12 that time. We're still firing high explosive ammunition, trying to cripple him and set him on fire. Look at that. I think the chance to set on fire in this ship is about 12%. So if you hit eight, generally he's going to be set on fire. We missed that last salvo, but this one should be better as we see the Omaha burning. Looks like he's already used his emergency crew and so his health is ticking down nicely from us. So now I'm firing armor-piercing ammunition. Wow, that one looked like that went just 
too close as he turns into us. He's dodged some torpedoes. He's turning into this Isokaze. We only hit one shot there. He's turning. Snaking away from us. It really does take a lot to be able to hit these shells. Now, I don't want to get too close to them, as we can see here. I'm turning, because otherwise I was going to go into these mounds. I guess that's what happened to, to Jingles over there. We've turned earlier, and we're controlling the engagement. As Jingles manages to kill that cruiser that we've been gunning for, now we have to uh, deal with this. What is it? It's a Mayogi. It is a Tier 4 Japanese battleship. And it's got 42,800 health. That's right. That Japanese battleship has got basically a third more hit points than a Tier 6 cruiser. So if you're used to World of Tanks, that gives you an idea of what the health pools are between the medium medium ships and the heavy ships, if you want to think of it but like that. So we hit him five times there with a sweet salvo and set him on fire. Looks like he used his emergency team immediately, however, as all the fires go off his ship. Now I've been have I've, I feel like when I'm engaging battleships with the Cleveland with its 152 millimeter shells, then in these kind of situations, it's great if you set them on fire, because that's consistent health ticking down off them, and when they've got uh, a lot of health. I'm not sure if it's percentage-based or an absolute value. If it is percentage-based, then obviously setting them on fire is great. So we hit his Citadel there, doing a thousand with uh, the only shell that hit him. But we're also defending the base. Right now, they've got two bases, and they're trying to cap the third. This is a domination-type game mode, which means there are three bases for controlling. As we manage to hit some more Citadel shots against the Mayogi, taking him down. So right now, while I'm tunnel visioning on this guy, I'm not focused up on really avoiding these ships. And to be honest, it's something I've really got to work on. Looks like I finally figure out that I might be crashing into some of my friends. And we're trying to dump AP shells now down onto him as he gets taken out. So this domination game mode, how does it work? Well, when you destroy enemies, your team gets point. Points, sorry. When... Uh, your allies die, you lose points. And you lose more than you gain for destroying the enemies. And so, effectively, this kind of makes the game last longer and draws the game out as we start to shoot at this, uh... What is that? That's a Kawachi! That must be another battleship, this time of Tier 3 variety. He got pretty unlucky to be engaged upon by a, a Tier 6 American cruiser. We are ripping him apart here. 2,000 with one salvo, 1,500 with that salvo. We're not even firing all of our guns at the same time here, and we're still doing thousands of damage. I would love to keep shooting this guy all day. Look at the ships that we're drifting into over here. There's a cruiser there. We turn our attention towards him. We've got destroyers in front of us. Oh gosh, we're going into a... Oh, we're completely outnumbered here. And that's to be expected, considering the enemy have got two extra ships than us at the start of the game, and they're also a killer head. Now we're trying to take out this Aoba. He's a very dangerous and important ship. But this Phoenix is focusing on me, so I turn my attention to him instead. We managed to kill the Aoba there with a sweet salvo, and then focus back on the, the Tier 4 American Cruiser class, the Phoenix. We hit four shells there, but it looks like they overpenetrated his ship. We're firing armor piercing at a Phoenix. Maybe we should be firing high explosive instead. Oh no, that one was much better. We did over 2,000 damage there with five hits. Now we're going to focus on another Phoenix that's to the right of us. They're very much focused on engaging me. But also firing at these two. Well, this battleship and the cruiser that's to the left. One thing that I think is important in World of Warships is that you're always trying to attack the enemies that are attacking you. Because eventually you're, you're going to lose health points to them. And frankly, sometimes you want to help out your allies, but sometimes it's up to you to survive as well. And taking out the opponents that are focusing on you is a very good way of doing that. We get set on fire, but we, re we send our emergency crew to go put the fire out. 
We put five more shots into the Phoenix. Now focus on this destroyer. We fire our first salvo. Look at those 12 shells going towards the target. Oh, not enough. Distance added to the shot. The range was wrong. One of our magazines gets critically damaged. And so, the, uh, unfortunately, this turret on the back of the ship is no longer working. And we're also on fire again. But it's a whole minute until we can set the fire out with an emergency crew. We are really in the hot seat here, and we narrowly avoid two clusters of torpedoes that were fired towards our ship. This is a very exciting game. We're just trying to figure out the lead that we have to get to get this Clemson. He's turning in. He's making serpentine movements to evade our fire. And because we only have one turret that's at the back, we're only able to keep three of our guns on him. 43 damage. I want a refund from that, please. Must be a grazing shot. I feel like he's going to turn in, and he was. But he didn't turn in far enough. Finally, we turn our front turrets round, and also our rear turret is fixed, and it's back in working order. And now surely we can rip apart this Clemson. Yes, there we go. Took out that destroyer before he was able to. And thankfully, our repair is back, and our crew manages to take the fire out, well, to put the fire out even without an emergency crew. Now we have an Isokaze that we're going to have to deal with. We've got all of our guns working on him. Check out the angle that you have to go to to be able to keep these turrets working. As we can see here on the front, the turrets can't turn all the way. So you need to drive away from your opponents at an angle or towards them at an angle to be able to make your guns work effectively. We managed to hit him a few times, starting to reduce his hit points. We hit him a couple times more, but we are firing armor-piercing ammunition at a very lightly armored ship. So we're trying to go for the home run here. While using serpentine movements to get away from the Myogi that's shooting at us, we are down to a fraction of our hit points, 3,600. So right now, I'm putting about 80% of my attention to focusing on doing evasive maneuvers while also trying to micromanage the shots that I put in. Also, the enemy have got fighters that are circling around us and we can see our anti-aircraft guns going after him. As we finally put in a massive hit into the Isokaze, taking him down to 2,000 health. Now I'm going to switch to high explosive ammunition because we've lowered his hit points so much. Oh, we took another big hit from the Mayogi. And we are not doing very well on our hit points, but the Isokaze is down to 100. Can we hit him? Oh, it's so close. Oh, it nearly got me. How are we managing to escape their fire right now? Come on, baby. We need to kill that Isokaze. We're under so much pressure. Our anti-aircraft guns are shooting down planes, as we can see in the sky, while we're trying to evade two hits. Connect onto us do 143 damage. We really are down to our last little bit of health now. But finally, the Isokaze seems to be driving in a straight line. Surely, surely, surely. Yes! He's down as well. That's our third kill of the game. And look how close the game is. Thank goodness we took him out as the enemy team who were ahead of us are now behind us. We've taken two base captures. This really was one of the most exciting games of warships that I've played so far. In the closed beta, I had many more exciting games in the alpha, winning sometimes a one versus five engagement. <laughs> but this, this really has been the most fun game that I've had. Torpedo bombers are coming in. Luckily for me, he fired his torpedoes poorly. We turned in slightly into them. They miss our ship. Our Knowing that we've evaded his fresh set of torpedoes fired us. We can focus back on this one-on-one -on -one now with the, uh, the tier four Japanese battleship. We fire off a full salvo. He fires two towards us. Oh no, please no, it's not my time. I'm too young. Thankfully he misses. It's very challenging to focus on your movements as well as also keeping your fire accurate towards your opponents. Finally, we seem to be controlling the engagement, forcing him to drive in a, a predictable manner. And they have 5,660 
with 6 out of 12 confirmed hits. This is where the Cleveland really is in its environment. 2,200 damage roughly there. 8 hits, not so lucky. Oh my word, we took a hit from a battleship and somehow it didn't kill us. We put in 9 hits there. But now because we're driving directly behind him, some of our guns can't fire at him. So what I'm doing is bringing the guns around occasionally to fire off a full salvo and then turning the rudder to make my movements unpredictable. And we're slowly, slowly, slowly taking him down. He's fired too. Oh no. Oh no, they're looking good. Slam dunk onto my ship. Great shot there by the enemy battleship as he takes us down and oh no by dying there we lost 40 points the enemy gained 25 points that was a huge swing and now the enemies are actually ahead on points they only need to get to a thousand to be able to win this game i'm putting so much pressure now on this huma as he is engaging this congo he's completely oh my word look at the whole horde of torpedoes going towards the enemy congo which is a surprisingly mobile battleship. He manages to get through all of the torpedoes with some amazing evasive maneuvers. That was like 12 torpedoes that all missed the Congo. Now he turns his attention to the... Uh, to the Faragut. While his secondary seemed to be focusing fire on the Kuma class ship. The enemy Congo. Actually, it wasn't the enemy Congo. Yes, the enemy Congo kills the destroyer that was harassing him. And now I focus my attention on what this Omaha is doing. This is a tier 5 American cruiser. He's fired a few shots at to the Congo. Is he going to hit him? His first salvo misses. Some great movements there from the Congo. But by turning in to avoid the first ones, he's had to put up the whole of the plane of his ship. And finally, the Omaha connects two of his torpedoes. Looks like he's caused flooding there. The Congo's health is ticking down from the flooding that's caused below the waterline. The enemy, the enemy are 40 the points from winning, and they've now taken two. They've taken one of the bases, and they're also taking another one, that battleship that killed me earlier. But thankfully, oh my word. Thankfully, it looks like this Omaha managed to take down the Congo, and now we only need 40 more points to win, but oh gosh, the enemy carrier has landed some great torpedoes, and our Omaha dies as well. What a crazy game this is. Look at the points at the top of the screen. It is neck and neck. I think Wargaming, oh, well, this is my ship slowly, like, uh, <laughs> below the water. Yeah, nothing to see here. Let's focus on something else, please. Come on. Come on, our camera baby. Focus on something else. Okay, well, I'll just say that Wargaming have done a fantastic thing with this domination game mode. It truly is spectacular. And they've made recent adjustments to it as well. The recent adjustments they've made is I think they've lowered the points that you get for holding the bases. I don't know exactly by how much, but now it's three out of four. Previously, it was higher than this. I'm not sure if it was four every four seconds or even if it was five every four seconds. But they've lowered it by just enough to make it so that all of this adds up to a fantastically exciting game where no longer can you really win by just completely capping. You have to also destroy the enemy team to be able to accelerate your team's uh, counter, so to say, to get to that thousand points and then to win the game for your team. So this was a great game for us. We got 170,000 credits and 2,565 experience. We hit 166 shots and destroyed three ships, including two Citadel hits. And so we finish second on experience. A massive shout out to that Omaha on our team, Kitchen, who managed to do just enough to take down that Congo. Otherwise, we would have undoubtedly lost. And I was also happy how the Cleveland was able to perform in this game. We were able to put ourselves in a very tricky situation and literally have the firepower to shoot our way out of it, forcing multiple cruisers to disengage and get away from us and taking out, uh, I think it was a, a couple of those destroyers towards the end, was very important because if you leave destroyers alive at the end of the game, they can rush around and cap and then you slowly get overtaken by the enemy team. 
One thing I should also mention about the Cleveland that I didn't really in the port is that it has fantastic anti-aircraft capabilities, as well as a scout drone which can increase your view range. You might have noticed that I had a, a, a Y key, an ability that I think I used at one point to try and dissuade those torpedo bombers from engaging me, which increases the firepower of your anti-aircraft guns tremendously and it can really save you, especially if there are a lot of carriers on the enemy team. All in all, I've thoroughly been enjoying the Cleveland. It's a lot of fun to play and I'm really happy that it finally got rid of the torpedoes that is used on the Phoenix and the Omaha and focused on really what I want from a cruiser and that is a reasonable amount of mobility and some fantastic guns. If I want torpedoes then generally I'm going to play a destroyer. Although I'm not saying that I'm ignorant to the fact that having those those torpedoes is a fantastic advantage in a close quarter situation. It can make you very universal as a ship. However, surely for balancing factors, having the torpedoes means that you have to lose some of your gun capabilities. Something that certainly cannot be said about the Cleveland, and that's why it's such a joy to play. I'm also really looking forward to getting the Pensacola. I'll probably get it in the next couple of weeks, and when I do, you guys can come and see it on the live stream. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like down below as it really helps the channel out and let me know what you think of the Cleveland in the comments down below. Does it look like the ship that you'll be interested in? Do you think that it's better to have torpedoes and main batteries or do you think it's better to just focus on one? And if you've gone up the American cruiser line, what do you think of the Cleveland compared to the Omaha and what do I have to look forward to? when I play the Pensacola. But as always guys, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.